Hi everyone, I am Max Asabin and this is my work. Mostly I used Photoshop and a little bit of Blender to create it. Stay tuned if you want to hear my story about working on this piece and get some useful tips. Uh, let's go! I began my work with a simple sketch in which I captured an idea floating in my mind. I am often asked where I get these ideas. In fact, I have many different images in my mind, inspired by different areas of creativity, from other art to movies and video games. So when I start painting, my actual emotional state just puts it together into one scene. For example, this work is something of an expression of my love of wearing hoods. In my childhood and youth I especially loved to do this. Maybe it was caused by psychology, as I am a very private person. So it's no surprise that the Thief and the Assassin's Creed video game series have become my favorites. I love the stealth style even in the Elder Scrolls games. Leave a comment about which video game universe is your favorite. Well, when the sketch is ready, I start looking for stock photos to work with. This work is a great example of the disadvantages of working with photo manipulation. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult to find high quality pictures in the right angle and lighting. While working on this piece, I even tried to find similar architecture in my city to shoot it. I also tried to create a gothic facade in 3D. Neither was successful. After many hours of searching, the best result I got was a picture with an almost correct angle, but not very good quality. I convert this to a smart object so as not to lose even more quality. By blending these pictures, I keep the same level of sharpness on the different parts of the facade. I also use the rays to tilt the details correctly. When I was done suffering with the facade, I moved on to taking pictures of myself to turn me into the character of this work. It would be right to take these pictures from a much longer distance under natural global illumination, but I am too lazy, so I took these pictures at home. Moreover, I didn't have a suit to match the setting, as I am not a real mercenary or even a cosplayer. Working in 3D would take too long, maybe I'll draw it by hand, uh, um, why not? I am not a costume designer, so I improvise, uh, inspired by the previously mentioned video games. Now you can see the painted details are a bit out of the picture, so spoiler, toward the end of the work I'll add a little noise to them. And here is some useful tip for you. In such cases you can take a noise sample from the original photo. To do this, find the most uniform area in the photo, in this case a piece of wall, select a small square and use a high pass filter with a small radius. Define it as a pattern and now you can apply it to the layers in the linear light mode. I have several layers in the folder and I applied the noise to it. Of course, you don't have to make noise again every time. In projects where it is not very noticeable, you can use the same presets. But sometimes there are unique cases with a clear special noise pattern and you need to be more careful. It took me about an hour to draw clothes. Uh, by the way, all the work shown here lasts 7 hours. And I'm afraid to imagine how long it took me all the work, along with the hard search for materials, shooting and so on. After that I start working on the background. I tried to cut out the moments where I work on details that did not affect the final result. So don't be surprised when some extra details and buildings suddenly appear and disappear in the video. Remember, it is important that the horizon line in the added photos of building matches with the horizon line of your background and other objects. By following this rule, you will ensure that 50% of your perspective is correct. If you also correctly measure the distance from the camera to the object in the picture, your perspective will be 100% correct. Yes, the distance from the camera to the subject has an incredible impact of the shape of objects we see. A building observed up close takes on a more fish-eyed appearance while a building observed from a long distance, on the contrary, looks more like an orthogonal view. It is a placement of objects without taking distance into account that is one of the main mistakes made by beginners. So far, I can't tell you any precise methods of determining the distance of the shot, except for your eyes. 
However, unlike the horizon line, determining the distance is much more complicated, and most of the time you will have to determine it by eye. This, of course, requires an experience and a good eye. Sometimes if stack photos contain metadata about the camera and lens, it is possible to match photos by focal length table. But this is a complex topic for nerds. Uh, I have a short video about it on my Patreon if you want. As you can see, at this stage I mostly did not work with color and light. I prefer not to decorate the work with color correction before the time. It can be confusing. When you are looking at a beautifully colored picture, you are not paying enough attention to other things. Oh, I almost forgot about freehand. Yes, we need to add some kind of artifact here. So the easiest way to do this is to create a 3D glass capsule. At this stage the work is nearing a more finished look, so I improve the clothes a little more carefully, drawing more details. I also work a little on the shadows and lighting of the character. Then I add a glow from the mysterious rod inside the capsule, but what makes it even more mysterious is the fog. It's one of the main parts of my idea. From the beginning I imagined the most hazy environment. I created it with a simple big soft blue brush, drawing a haze considering the aerial perspective. If you suddenly don't know what the aerial perspective is, google the term immediately. In short, it's about how the saturation, contrast and clarity of objects changes at a distance. Any photo has an aerial perspective, even in the clearest of weather, because the air is rarely completely clear. In the fog, the aerial perspective gains its maximum power. Next, I resize everything a little in the background and refine a little more details and lighting. It's time to add some light to the window. Here I want to give you another useful tip. I often see novice artists just put a warm color on a window to create light in it. But when the window with your picture is large enough, this method is not realistic at all. That's why I always add an interior to the window, like some corner or a wall in a room. It's good if you find a picture with correct perspective to match the angle of your window, but even if you are not very good at perspective, adding almost any part of the interior in the window make it more realistic. You can do without it if your glass is frosted or the window is too far and small. Anyway, of course you should to make it warmer and add a little glow around the edges. So I gave vividness to the far plan by drawing the blurred light of the windows. After that the background was finally ready and I used a little bit of lens blur. Of course I don't forget to add a warm glow to the character. The work is nearing its final, I put a haze with a more obvious smoky structure. That's where I tell you another tip on how I create my smoky brushes. Of course, I use pictures of smoke selecting those where it has the most interesting shape and structure. You can choose any one you like, which you can carefully separate from the background. In this case I use channel mixer, as it's the easiest way to prepare the blue sky folder to turn it into a brush. But most of the time it will be enough to shift black points in curves or levels. If the piece of smoke is not very even, it's better to cut it to a more rounded shape. When you are sure that the background is black enough, invert the image and define the area with the smoke as a brush. After that, you only need to add a scattering, shape dynamics and transfer settings. The brush is ready. Well, the work is almost done too. And before I show you the result, um, I think it's clear that this is my first time trying to speak English and it's very hard for me emotionally. But I hope that did not make it too difficult for you to watch it, and hope this video was interesting and useful for you. If so, please support me with your likes and comments and thank you for watching.